MFly is a design build fly student project team at the University of Michigan um, and we are focused on designing, building, and flying three competition aircraft for the three competitions we compete in. Um, SAE advanced class, uh, SAE regular class, and uh, SUS autonomous, so that is the autonomous plane all the way back there. That's the regular class plane and that is the advanced class pit over here. Uh, this is primarily the place we work out of. Uh, we also have an avionics workshop upstairs in the mezzanine. Um, and we also use a variety of different ca uh, campus resources here to complete all of our planes and do all of our design work. So. Are these your old yeah. planes from previous years? Yes, that is the M4, uh, the M8, the Mat 4 from last year, and then so just some bits and pieces, um, Mat 4 wing to fences, uh, and just some fuselage parts around. So, all right. yeah. Yeah. And what a Era or SAE event are you guys going to? Yes. East or West? Uh, we are going to East this year. East, yeah, right. competing in regular class and advanced That's classes. Soon, right? Right? Yes. So, as you can see here, uh, our aircrafts are nearing completion. We actually have our unveiling event this coming Wednesday. So, we are hoping to finish our aircraft by Wednesday to unveil them to the university and the world. Yeah. Uh, we have our first flight test plan for next Saturday. All so. right. Nice. Yeah. For both yeah. planes? For all three planes. So I've been here since my freshman year. I'm a senior now in aerospace engineering. Okay. Um, freshman year, I was just a member on the propulsion team. My sophomore year, I was the propulsion lead for both the regular class and advanced class plane. Uh, and then my junior year, I was the chief engineer for the autonomous plane and now I'm the team captain. All right. So, and so you're yeah. in charge of all the teams? Yes. All, right. all three planes. We have this entire space uh, of four tables. We have this sort of modular table where we move in, but we can also fit an extra table in there if we have extra work that goes on the table. Um, and obviously we have all of this shelf space, uh, that space as well. We also have a storage space in the aerospace building, uh, in the basement of the aerospace building, where we store a lot of our tooling boards. Um, we make a lot of our parts with carbon fiber, so that requires our tooling boards to make those complex shapes and the molds. Um, and you can see our tooling boards back there for this year's aircraft. Uh, so when we have aircraft, when we have extra tooling board that we get from some of our sponsors, uh, we usually keep them down there, or just old tooling board that we might use to remake a plane that we've already made before. So, okay. Yeah. So you want to tell me about the regular class mission? Yep. Uh, so the regular class mission uh, is around carrying as much payload in one lap around the flight field uh, as possible with a few constraints. We have a 750 watt power limit. We have a maximum 15 foot wingspan limit. Uh, and we have a restriction that no one piece of the aircraft uh, can be longer than four foot in any primary direction or oh, dimension. Okay. Um, so our plane breaks down here and here into four foot sections and then we have four wing sections. This is just one of them. Oh wow. So. Yeah. So it's a, a huge plane. We get so we get points for carrying more payload and having a larger wingspan. So try to maximize those as much as possible. Yeah and what's the payload again? Uh, it's just uh, steel blocks. Uh, they're being milled right now but um, okay. yeah just steel boxes. So are the steel blocks going in? Yeah they're gonna go right in here in this payload bay right here. Okay. And you don't have to drop anything like the advanced class Correct. at all? Correct. Yeah, so we just have to go up, fly, lap, and land. Okay. <laughs> we just have, we have a short, we have a tight uh, takeoff limit, 100 feet, uh, and then we have a 400 foot landing distance. And what's the M-Fly pin about? Oh yeah, so this is our RBF tag. So I'm not sure if you, if anyone has any backpacks down here. We have um, what's very popular at the aerospace uh, clubs in Michigan is uh, these remove before flight tags. Um, you'll see in your aero classes kids with 15 or 16 of them like dangling off their bag. Yeah. Um, just every club, every club makes them. Even like, so, Massa has some. Uh, I know BSA and WA have them. So. I see Top Gun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I say, who's uh, the Tom Cruise of the group? Of the group, the Tom yeah. Cruise of the group. I think it's Eric. I think I think it's Eric. Are, are you the Tom Cruise of the group? I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> And so I guess you're more the, the, the maverick of the group, I guess. Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like you're very much, I'm doing it, my way, my way. <laughs> so uh, you want to tell me about the mission for the advanced plane? Yeah, so the advanced class plane is a mostly systems engineering based competition where you have to integrate three different vehicles. We have the main aircraft right here. Its main objective is to carry 
the uh, static water payload as much as possible. The more water payload you carry, the more points. And deploy a secondary aircraft, which is the PADA. The PADA stands for Powered Autonomous Delivery Aircraft. It deploys from the main plane and has to land towards ground targets. And there's a bunch of constraints and rules on the PADA. For example, it has to fly autonomously. Um, there's a one pound weight limit. So, and the payload that it carries is components for the last vehicle, which is the GTV, the ground transport vehicle. Once it's delivered by the PADA, it goes through an obstacle course delivering the water carried by the main plane to its final destination. It's an intense mission. Yeah, guys, lots of stuff going are on. Are you guys ready for it? I think so. I know so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I hope so, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we've been doing a lot of testing for all our different stuff. Um, obviously, the main plane isn't built. We're having our first flight test um, next week, but that'll be on, we've already done PADA tests on prototype PADAs, a bunch of drops. Um, a bunch of flight tests on that, and we're pretty happy. This is the, after, after all of the iterations, this is our final iteration, obviously not complete, but. Yeah. And then we have the, we're still working on testing in the GTV, which this year we're doing a convertible version. So for the PADA, this design, the wings come off. There we go. So then this center part, take out the spar, throw wheels on it, that's your GTV. Oh, wow. So the PADA turns into the GTV. Correct. Okay. They don't make it easy for you guys, do they? No, they don't. <laughs> well, it, it's technically, that's, you know, that's, that's the way we interpreted it. In previous years, we delivered a whole off-the-shelf RC car that we still have uh, upstairs, but it's huge and bulky. Yeah. And for that one pound weight limit, we're trying to stay under it as much as possible. This is the best way we found. Do you guys fly it down? Do you ship it? We drive. So drive. We, have a, we have our own trailer, and then okay. we borrow a truck from the university, and then we make a long drive down. OK, yeah. How long is that drive? Uh, it would say straight, it's probably like 13, 14 hours, but you obviously got to make stops, yeah. sleep, stuff like that. It takes us two days. Okay. Do you like the road trips? Oh, it's, the, uh, it's some of the best part. <laughs> right? How many hours are you guys in the workshop working on these? <laughs> it's a great question. I mean, we lost count, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we spend a decent amount of time here. Uh, during the manufacturing season, it's a lot easier to track. Uh, we have manufacturing uh, five out of the seven days a week, except Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh, so Wednesdays we have our team meeting, so either a general team meeting with general members or a leads meeting, or sometimes we have a social event just to give people time to uh, de-stress and relax. Yeah. Um, and during our build sessions, there are three hour build sessions. So, uh, you know, three times five, 15 hours a week, but sometimes it goes way more than that, obviously, there could be extra meetings. Um, yeah, so I would say like during the manufacturing season, it's about 15 hours a week, maybe a, probably a little bit more, probably closer to 20. Um, during the design phase, we have weekly sub-team meetings, which are about two hours long, but it's only like once or twice a week, so it's about uh, four to six hours a week, probably a little bit more still. <laughs> okay, wow. Yeah. So does this cut into your, your class time? You guys yeah. struggle there? Pretty much, yeah. pretty much. Uh, I mean, I, I, at least for me, uh, last year, you know, you go to classes from 9 to like 5 p.m., so, something like that. Yeah. And then from 6 p.m. till the end of the evening <laughs> is mostly M-Fly. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it cuts into classes, you, you know, it's just time management and learning, you know, what days of the week can I you know, spare time to do work? And you, you don't have the same classes every single day, so you can have more time throughout the day. Go to office hours, you know, get help, do homework, all that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from New York City originally. Okay, mm -hmm. the Big Apple. Mm -hmm. Nice. What brought you to Michigan? Um, because, well, mostly because, well, first off, they did a lot of, the kid did a lot of, um, recruit, I don't know if recruiting's the right word, but for my high school, they came to my high school at, like, the college fair, and also, the main reason I want to come, though, is because I want to do aerospace, and Michigan just has a great aerospace engineering program, nice. so that really got me interested looking into it, and finally applying and getting in. Where do you guys test? Uh, there's an, uh, RC flight field in Milan, Michigan, that's about 15, 20 minutes south of here. Um, and then we have our university pilot, um, who I think has a membership there, if that's correct. He has a membership there, um, so we uh, either take the, our trailer or run to U-Haul and take our planes down there, set it up down there, and fly okay. there. And does your pilot come to the competitions, or you get Yeah, so he's there? not gonna, we, have a, we have a pilot through SAE that we oh, use, okay. um, but he comes to, he also, he's a very experienced RC pilot, um, so he, has, he comes to our design reviews and gives us some pointers on certain oh, things okay. and helps us out a little bit nice. there. Um, so I guess the pilot's pretty important, but yeah, you got to tell them about the plane so they flies it correctly. Right? Exactly. So you yeah. got to know everything yeah. about it oh, yeah. and be able to <laughs> yeah. explain it. Yeah. So does it help that he knows stuff about it? It does. Yeah. There are a few helpful tips that he's been able to, to point us in out. Nothing obviously too major, but, um, 
Uh, whenever we have questions, like uh, we, we were thinking about putting these magnets for hatches, we were curious if it would interfere with the electronics. Uh -huh. um, so we talked to him, he was like, no, it's, it'll be fine. Like as long as you keep it, as long as it's not right up against it, it'll be fine. So okay, stuff like good. that, he, he's really helpful with. Yeah, is it a scary point, it's something you put all this work into in the, just a pilot's hands? Sometimes it's a little nerve wracking just cause yeah, you put so much work into it, but we have like a, a lot of faith in our pilot. He'll yeah. be able to, to fly it well, so. And uh, so crashes always happen at Arrow, right? This is true. Do you like, you don't like when it crashes, obviously, mm -hmm. but when you're done with the competition, mm -hmm. people always push their planes to the limit. Is mm -hmm. this, do you guys push it to the limit till it crashes? Yeah. Um, two years ago, uh, the M14, we basically, like, we built up the payload. We started at, like, half, and then we did, like, three quarters, and then, like, yeah, we, we kept building up, and then we we're like, all right, the wind's strong. Let's go all out. We put everything on, and then through the bank, it crashed. So <laughs> it, it was worth it. It was fun. It, it flew a bunch of times. It was a lot of fun. So. Good. And when it crashes, do you bring it back to fix it, or you just leave it? Uh, we, yeah, first, you have to look, make sure it's something we can fix. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, a game time decision, I guess. Yeah. yeah. See how it is. Yeah. All right. Do you have a favorite location? So, yeah, so I've been to two. I've been to uh, two years ago, I went to Fort Worth. And then last year we were in Lakeland. Um, I gotta say, I, I like Fort Worth a lot. The barbecue is really good, so that might that might have to be my favorite. Yeah. Um, but uh, I love both places. <laughs> as long as you're flying a plane that you built, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And your planes are getting ready to be unveiled. Yes. What kind of work goes in before to get to this point? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll just walk you through the entire M-Fly design cycle. Yeah. So we have a year-round design cycle where uh, beginning in April, we elect the new leads for the next year. Uh, following that election period, obviously we have finals and all of that. So uh, the old leads get to you know relax a little bit from the year. New leads get to get acquainted with their fellow leads and their chief engineer and you know the team captain and the administrative team. Uh, following that period, we have the transition period where we transition the new leads uh, into the team. Uh, and from there, we started a tradition where we just start working immediately uh, since SAE is primarily a three-year design cycle. Uh, most of the time, we are lucky to have some of the similar rules going into next year so they can begin working a little bit on the planes. Uh, they can at least come up with a mock and then if it doesn't end up panning out or there's some slight changes to the rules, then we can pivot as needed. Uh, and the autonomous class is usually somewhat predictable, so we can also start designing aircraft for that. Uh, so yeah, going into June and July is mostly training and designing that new aircraft. Uh, designing a new aircraft over the summer while the leads have time is very critical because they can hone their skills and perfect the knowledge that they're going to use to eventually design the final aircraft. Uh, coming into the school year, uh, we usually have some trainings that we have the leads do. So uh, to get access to this building, you need to complete uh, basic uh, training, to basic safety trainings, and also operational trainings for the tool shop. Uh, following that, we design, go through the entire design play phase that semester, which includes two design reviews. Uh, a critical design review and a preliminary design review. And then coming into December and January, uh, we have our manufacturing phase. So towards the end of December, we start manufacturing, hoping to complete it mid or early February. Uh, and then that gives us about a month to test fly, given the Michigan weather, <laughs> uh, so we can push things around, uh, test fly for a month, go to competition in March. Wow, so yeah. all year. All year, pretty on. busy, yeah, yeah.